All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Sorry we're a few minutes late. Um, I got a new MacBook and uh, uh, obviously doesn't remember any of my passwords, but we're good to go. Very excited to have you guys back. Our first podcast of the new year, right? Hopefully everyone had a good holiday season and we're bringing you number 26 today, hashtag BKOT. Uh, with me, I have a special guest. I have out of Austin, Texas, owner and head coach of Action Coach, Scott Finkelstein. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about learning about system, systematic business coaching methods and overcoming challenges for your firm. So I think you'll like this one because we all need help as far as the managing of our time, sales and marketing and leadership, right? So let's get this started. Uh, Scott, thank you so much today for joining us. Please tell us about yourself and the floor is yours. Sounds good. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Hello to everyone. Happy New Year. I think we can still say that, right, for a couple more. Yes, for sure. <laughs> it's been great here, Austin. Yesterday we got snow for the first time in a few years, so it was uh, it was fun to be here, kick the year off that way. But it's it's twenty twenty one. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, myself, like you said, a little about me. After a thirty year corporate career, uh, typically, you know, running the sales part of the organizations. A year and a half ago, I moved to Austin. I bought a franchise called Action Coach. Been around for 30 years, and it's really about supporting our local communities and specifically the small business owners and entrepreneurs and their teams to, to just bring success to their business. And, and whatever that means for each and every one of them, you know, a lot of business owners out there, they work way too many hours and, and don't quite make the money they thought they would when they said, had this big old dream. Oh, I'm going to open a business. And we help them make those dreams become reality, increase their income, increase their joy in the business, and as important, increase their time out of the business. And there's a lot of ways we do that, but that, that's kind of what our focus is for all. You said it spot on. Uh, accountants work too much in the business and they need to... Um, it could be different. Like you said, it could be maybe needing more clients or it could be how to effectively drive more business from their existing clients, right? So uh, I love what you said about that. And, and, and it's very important. So it all starts with the whole marketing piece, right? And so in, in working with um, accounting firms, uh, my question is, uh, for one, working with small businesses in general, what do you see different and how do you approach it in the marketing aspect for accounting firms? Great question. Uh, it does start with marketing. You know, it's funny. We always say sales and marketing, but it's actually marketing and sales. And I talk about this all the time. If you don't market well, which is what I like to call the, the fuel to your sales rocket ship, you know, meaning getting people into your sales funnel, then you have no one to sell to. And in so many people, even in, the corporate world confused the two. There's a big difference, uh, but the messaging is the same. It's just the different components of the message. So for, for accounting firms, and we work with uh, some of the good ones here in Austin and, and all over the, the States actually, they can double their business just from their own client work. It, it truly is. We did a workshop this uh, last week actually called 21 Steps to Building Your Referral Engine. And for, especially for accounting firms, because when you look at, when they list who are the top advisors that people trust the most in their life, number one, typically, if not number two, is the accountant. So you have to, how do you, you've got that trust, which, you know, Chris, you know, you're a sales guy too. Sales is about building trust so I can, you can convince you, show you how we can help you, whatever your widget or service, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Level of trust already. We just got to turn real, help them realize, and that's what we do in a lot of coaching, is you are a salesperson. Let's give you the scripts. Let's teach you the system to selling within your client base, let alone in your community. And, you know, one of our accountants, accounting firms we work with, we've brought over 50% growth in 2020 just from the referral system we brought in for them. Yeah, I, well said. Um, I, I, uh, I've worked in different industries over the last 15 years now, and references have always been um, uh, a powerful tool, but also when you referred, when someone's referring you, um, it's just, 
it's more of a, a relaxed consultation. It's not, it puts them at ease and it's like, okay, you know, somebody said great things about you, tell me why and how. So it's very important to start right then and there. And yeah, the accountant is a, is a powerful resource, right? And so, and, and, and spot on, right? If they like you, they trust you, they trust you, they're willing to hear you out, right? They, you could be the smartest person on this planet, but if they don't like you, it's not going to work out, right? And so the, um, in regards to uh, referrals, right, um, do, you, do you find that um, uh, doing it in a way of um, the, the small things, right, uh, the birthdays or come up or little reminders, or do you find that like uh, refer referral groups where they're sharing best practices or is there um, anything specific, uh, a, a tip to, uh, to, to share with us today? There's a, well, there's a lot of tips we could do there, but all that's true. All that is, 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 has to happen, but it really comes down to, are you doing it in every aspect of your client interaction? Hmm. So, you know, at the end of every email you're sending to your clients and my, you know, I've just, over the last week, I've gotten inundated with emails from my, C, my, my CPA because they do my personal and my business. Hey, we're getting you ready. This, this, and that. And because they're also my client, guess what it says at the end of each email? Is there anyone, you know, is there anyone else we can help? You know, so you have to constantly be asking in every interaction, which then gets into the, the higher, the bigger part picture of it all, which is you need to train your clients that one, I'm going to keep asking for referrals and two, it's a requirement of doing business with you. Mm -hmm. And then they're ready for it. And then they start thinking now, just like you, was it in marketing? You got to, or in a commercial, you have to ask seven times something is, I think is a number for, for it to resonate with people. Well, it's the same thing in referrals. You got to keep asking and asking to where it starts resonating with them that they start thinking about. Yeah, there's um, touch points, right? So yeah, it's like five to seven times, you know, they see an email, they get a call, they meet with you in person, they get a e-newsletter, Yep. And they see your they see your ad in the paper or online, and it just keeps popping up, right? And so, those are some um, uh, so referrals is very powerful. But what have you found out to to drive new clients to um, with social media and print ads, digital, in this day and age of this ongoing pandemic becoming virtual? Um, what would you say an, another step? So you're working on your existing base. You're, 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 you're having that touch point all day long. Now you're trying to bring in uh, through a different avenue. I mean, there's so many, so many different ways out there um, to start. Where, where would you say that, that after working on your existing client base, where else should they start? They should be going to every networking event they can uh, within their community because everyone needs a CPA. Everyone needs an accountant. And most of them there, as you know, our sole entrepreneurs or small business owners, they need someone to help with their bookkeeping as well. All the things I know you can help support the firms with as well. They need all that. So go to these networking events. We script out the 30 to 40 second pitch you have so that you sound different, that you're not just the, hey, it's Scott with ABC CPA and uh, I can do your taxes. Okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. <laughs> You, you gotta, you, you know, in sales, Chris, you gotta connect with people. You gotta, you gotta. Yeah, that's so funny. Connect people with, do that. Right? So, yeah, I, I wanna see my accounting firms getting out into the marketplace as themselves. The ones who, as they get to about 10, 10 people on their team, we start to look can we hire a salesperson, a business development person? But even that, the, C, the smaller firms too, get out there, especially. Prior to, we're about to, as you know, head into real busy season for the for, for all these guys. You got to be out there, you know, not including 2020. After April 15th, take a vacation and you should be out there till December 31st, building up your referral partners, getting in new clients, um, depending, you know, are you, if it's individual, you're going to market at a different, the end of the year where they're, if you're doing bookkeeping as well, doing the business accounting side, then you're marketing all year round. Um, you just got to get out there. Uh, like I said, you know, you're going to post, of course, on social media. You're going to have your newsletter. Those are the slow drip campaigns you have. But if you want to bring on clients right away, 
it's a com it, it's getting your getting out there it's getting to these networking events going to your chamber events being a guest speaker by the way just like myself in my coaching business as you know you and i got issues because i was doing a workshop the other week with a with a, a mutual partner out there these everyone wants to hear from the cpa on how they can reduce their tax bracket whether it's in business or personal all these chambers, you name the event, they'll let you talk for five to 15 minutes. Let them know you want to. Well said. Yeah, it's spot on. Um, with uh, the touch points, getting your name, your face out there. Um, and even now in this virtual environment, everyone's switching over, not becoming you know, fully virtual, but they're switching over and offering events online. I see them all the time on LinkedIn. You got to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Um, now let's move on to um, now we have clients are coming in and we're busy and uh, uh, now we're talking about, you know, time management, which is <laughs> a lot of clients I speak with uh, literally work 70, 80 hours a week and, and, and they're getting it done, but it's got to be a more effective way. So how would you start uh, an approach in, in, in guiding some uh, a client with uh, time management skills? Yeah, great question. We, call, we, we do a workshop, Time Management from Chaos to Control. That's the title of it, right? Beautiful. And especially, God, this last year, there's a lot of chaos for everyone. We had our kids at home while we're trying to work. Uh, the dog's barking in the background, you name it, right? So, but in, in the end, time management is about control. And I love when people say to me, well, I just don't have control of my calendar. Yes, you do. Take control, you know, call a time out and say, stop. Don't let people just put things on your calendar. Control the amount of time you meet with people. And the best way we start with all that is what we call time study. And I will have them for up to a week, literally every 30 minutes, they have uh, just a sheet of paper or an accountant. So they have a spreadsheet pulled up. And from 8 to 8.30 at the end, summarize what you did for the, for the today and keep going through that. And then at the end, we're going to come back through the exercise and we're going, to, we're going to kind of title each one what category of the five to seven will probably say everything falls under. And then they see where they're spending all this time. And it's like, wow, it's eye-opening. So then from there, we start figuring out, okay, do we need to spend 20 hours a week on email? And the answer is always no there, by the way. Um, you know, so we can start doing that. If they're the leader of the group or manager or, or the, you know, it's their firm, how do we delegate? So we, in our time management workshop, we get into delegation. Uh, we also get into, you know, everyone's kind of getting back into the offices now, depending where you are in the country, of course. Um, having office hours within the office for your team so that they are prepared instead of, you know, Chris, you and I have worked in offices off and on for many, many decades, right? And how often someone pops in your, your office and next thing you know, 20 minutes later, they still haven't asked the question. So it, it's, I, mean, I can go on for hours on this, but it's getting control. It's setting expectations. And it's when you have people on your team under you, it's letting them know when your office is open, come on in, open, open hours, so to speak, open swim versus, hey, I don't have, Scott's not available right now. I'm going to save my questions to my one-on-one -on, -one on Monday or at four o'clock every day, I'm allowed, you know, there are, Chris is open for me to pop in. It's training them too. It's, it's, uh, and that's just the beginning of time management, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pivotal. Um, simply because in the office environment, clients would pop in, right? Unexpectedly. Yeah. Um, now uh, clients are calling unexpectedly. And they're taking the phone calls. I've, I've had many appointments set with clients and they miss them. And they're just so apologetic. It happens all the time. I've gotten used to it. But it, they're so apologetic because they just, uh, they didn't have control of their schedule. You yeah. know, they allowed this to happen. And I, I find that um, I'm, I, myself too, included, is technology has helped us out as well. Uh, having everything scheduled, having you could um, utilizing different platforms, have um, certain links you could send out if it's uh, or, or options, right? Um, I think you had it too, like 15 minutes if you want to talk about this, 30 minutes if you want to talk about this, and 45 minutes if you need to talk about this. And so having those options, utilizing technology is an avenue to help get that control because you can't just wing it, especially nowadays with um, uh, uh, you got to have the technology in place 
there's many different options available um, out there. Have you find that, have you found out prior to the pandemic and now um, the using technology has increased to stay the same or what are your thoughts with that? Definitely increased. Uh, and I, you, you know, on all levels, obviously, was the, being able to do a Zoom meeting with a client saves your travel time. So even if they're five minutes down the road, it's five minutes until you get to your car, five minutes in the car, you're in your, you know, it, it adds up really fast. So technology has allowed us to have more time to be productive, but it's also caused some people to work too many hours. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination. So you got to know when to shut, shut it off. Um, I use, you're talking about, uh, I use Calendly. There's a whole bunch of them out there. And, in, in, you know, a lot of my clients will say, use it this way. Instead of the going back and forth, you know, technology benefits time management. Hey, Chris, you want to meet? Here's my lit calendar. Go, go click it on and go, go schedule something. Okay, great. But if you, I don't get specific based on the meeting that, hey, I only have sales calls from eight to one, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and three to, you know, then all of a sudden you've given control, I've given you control of my calendar. So you've got to use technology the right way. And when you do it, it's, you, you, time is money. I mean, we've all heard that. One of my CPA firms, their goal, CPA firms are similar to, to, um, to law firms. It's about billable hours, especially for the bookkeepers, right? Their bookkeepers were averaging about 72% billable hours. Our target was 85%. We did, a, we did about a three-hour time management workshop with the whole team, and then we had a whole bunch of follow-up. I trained the trainer and all that. Within two and a half months, we got their bookkeepers from 72 to 85% billable hours. Think Beautiful. About, think about two things. One, how that affects the bottom line positively. But number two, everyone started getting home earlier, as you, talk, you know better than me in this industry, especially as we get into tax season, they're working 70 and 80 hours and on Saturday. Um, yeah, yeah it, it, it's we want time management gives you two things. Yes, it will give you more profitable income. But two, more importantly, at least the way I look at life is it gives me more time in my life and out of my business. Yeah, I always hear that uh, you know, it's, it's like uh, you're an accountant and you like accept this role and idea that you're going to work every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's they're accepting it, but it's not necessarily needs to happen, right? And and control, 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 utilizing technology the right way. And you're spot on with that because I, I forgot um, I, we use Calendly, right? But I forgot to put in a lunch break, so every day I'm like, what the heck? I I never eat. And then so I structured it to where you know I have a podcast link, I have a client link, and then. Chris time. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, you're spot on with that. Uh, for, for a month, I didn't realize this. I'm like, why am I never eating? And I'm like, oh, there's no break. Um, and so it could be your best friend, but if you don't utilize it properly, yeah, you're, you're never going to eat. Um, the the uh, last thing that um, I want to talk about is the, the leadership skills, right? So you got clients, you got control of your schedule, uh, things are going well. Now, leadership can go many different ways and, and, and uh, I'm researching more on like how to become a stronger virtual leader, right? But in general, if um, I find that if you're a leader and, and you can bark orders all day long, but I, I feel that if you're uh, working alongside your staff and your associates and, and is more effective and also showing some vulnerability, right? You, you, you may know it all and but you can't really you know, show that. Um, so talk to me about kind of the, uh, the leadership aspect of this and how um, accounting firms can you know, utilize this in, in, a, in a positive way. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Uh, all leadership starts with self-leadership. I can't, I can't be a strong influence, positive hopefully, in your life if I'm not, uh, if when you look at me, you don't see someone who has self-leadership. Self and so you got to have, we start in leadership with our, with, with all leaders and also yes, in the accounting world with self-leadership. What kind of firm do you want to be? What's the vision and value you're going to, you want your firm to have? And it starts internal. The old Herb Keller from Southwest Airlines, you take good care of your employees, they'll take good care of your clients. Um, 
and that's, a, you know, and, and listen, our, our accountants, our bookkeepers, they take good care of all their clients, but they don't take good care of themselves. So I focus on the self-leadership with the, the, the owner of the firm and for each person in there for all of them to recognize, to your point, no, you're not supposed to work 70 hours. You're supposed to have family. And I remember one of my CPAs, one of the biggest things we did for the, her last year is Friday night, she started attending movie night with, the, with, with her family. Nice. You know, and, and what that does, again, time management is about that more than the money because you can't, that's worth an infinite amount. But it starts with the self-leadership. And then you're right, being there, being that servant leader where you are by their side, showing you're setting the example. But as a leader, you're bringing in, like the firm did, they brought me in to teach them to have better time management. So it's, it's giving them the tools to be successful in their role within the firm. And additionally, if you really structure your training, which is what I've always done in my career, to be more life training than business training, because every role, I guess there's technical pieces to accountants, of course, but a lot of what they do every day is about life training, and that's just the approach. So we work on all that. And, and then again, like I said, for the, especially in this industry, the head of that company, that, that firm has to say, Chris, you're going home. You're done. Goodbye. It's, fri- it's five o'clock Friday. Go be with your family. You know, outside of maybe that last month of March 15th to April 15th. But we can still cut that down by 10 or 15 percent those 70 hour weeks. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, they, they, uh, you get into this industry and you think it's 24 seven all year round. Yeah. Towards that deadline, it will be. But the rest of the month, it doesn't have to be. It does not have to be whatsoever. Um, and, and, and it's important to ask for help. Um, and that's why we have resources like you. Um, and I, I myself, I, I'm very, uh, I could be stubborn. And so I have a way and, and it works. But over the years, I have opened feedback, uh, coaching, criticism, and take it in stride and ask for help. It's important, right? And, Show, show vulnerability and and resources like you is, is important to help us you know have control of our not only of our work but also our lives and for our own health aspect I mean there's all these articles I'm reading online mental health is like deteriorating I mean I worked from home for four years and so I don't see myself going back to an office but it took me seven months to figure out what the heck I'm doing right and so um, it's important to have that important uh, work-life balance for sure um, and so in regards to, um, uh, staffing wise, right. So I know you don't work too much with, with offshore staff, um, but you know, where do you think this could integrate? Where do you see it going forward and, and your thoughts about it and leveraging, especially with like a time zone difference? No, I, I'm a big fan of offshore staffing. Um, and I work with all my, my clients in a lot, especially during busy season. So with a couple of my CPA firms, we've been looking at you know, in December, what's, what are we going to need once we hit February 1? That's kind of what they say is when we really need, we want to bring people in before then so we can train them on our way. Um, and offshoring is a great way to go. The, the talent level out there is enormous, so you, especially if you're in a small community, you know, maybe a rural area where you can't find the talent. What you guys offer is amazing. Um, it's, it's just getting with you guys, figuring out what their needs are. So I, I, am a big fan of that in many aspects, like, you know, I know you guys do virtual assistant, you know, all these things, we can take that proverbial hat off the owner's head and get someone else do it at a, a price point that makes sense. Like still gives us this great customer service, technical skills, all that. Why wouldn't you do it? Uh, it's it's important to have the right staff in place. And so, you know, utilizing uh, your strategies, utilizing the right staff in a combination, you need a local team, no matter what, local, even remote, you got to have them. But an offshore team adds value and help building a better work-life balance and driving revenue for sure. Yeah. And so, um, Scott, tell me a couple of, um, of, the, of the programs that you do and um, uh, maybe a recommendation of where someone should start with you and kind of how long um, uh, they take. Um, um, so tell me a little bit about your programs. 
Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, a, a few different, we have a lot, we have a lot of different programs. So typically with, with the accounting firms, we'll get into one-on-one -on -one coaching where we're working with the owner and for some of them they'll also bring in their most senior uh, team member. And we're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and all the topics we've covered in more, you know, we're going to first build the roadmap. We're at point A, this is the current state. What do we want the future state to look like? And we build a roadmap backwards and that's what we work on every week. And every 90 days we do, we do planning. We get together for half a day and we plan out the next 13 weeks. So that's typically where we'll start. Now, for some sole proprietors out there, or maybe it's only three of them where they still need to bring that revenue up so they can invest in a full coaching program. We've got what we call our sales scalers program. And that's a, a low investment entry into coaching. We just focus on sales and marketing and it's in a group environment and we're going to help. Let's ramp things up the right way, of course, so that you can have, get to the goal of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And those are, those are the two main programs, but for anyone to your other, last question of how do they get started? Anyone listening, just go to our website. We believe in growth.com. That's we believe in growth.com and just click on the blue button complimentary coaching session. We want to help you. You want to talk about anything. It's a 30 minute session. We'll talk about it. And if you want from there, typically we'll do a 90 minute strategy session, which also is complimentary. And from there at the end, we'll, you'll have a roadmap to go do it yourselves. There's a lot of DIYers out there and that's great. Other ones will say what kind of coaching program makes sense for me. We'll, we'll structure the right program for them. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you for that. And so, um, and, and winding down, just uh, some final thoughts from you on your side. Uh, again, appreciate everything you said, but any final thoughts uh, for our audience out there today? Yeah, first, thank you, Chris, for the opportunity to reach the audience. I mean, I, of course. I got into coaching after three year corporate career because I wanted to help small businesses. I've sold a lot to them and I see the help that they need. So that's why I got into coaching. Um, there's a lot of uncertainties in 2021. We, we, you know, there still is more so than in 2020, you could argue, get a coach, put a plan together, get a coach. There's, if, you, if it's not me, there's amazing coaches out there. And just like we talked earlier, I might not be the one for you. Maybe it's someone else. Get a coach. I have a coach. I pay him every month to put his foot up my butt, as I like to say, but you all need it. You can't, no one can go through this by themselves, especially with what these last 12 months are and what 2021 is going to be. There's great room for growth. Absolutely. I love my CPA and accounting clients have been growing, but you need help. We all do. So find the help. As I said, we believe in growth.com. We're here to help go, go to your local chapter somewhere else in your community chamber and find a great coach locally if you need, but get the help you need because it, it pays itself exponentially in the return on the investment. It truly does. I agree. Absolutely. Spot on, Scott. So everyone, thank you for taking time out of your busy Monday. Um, hashtag BKOT to look up other of our podcast series. Uh, we are working on a few others as we speak. And so again, thanks for your time, Scott. This was Cheers. awesome. I uh, had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to speak to our audience today. And uh, good luck with the snow. Do you guys have any like, uh, what do you call them? Snow plows out there? I, I was like... <laughs> It, it's no, I grew up on the East Coast where you are, as you know. No, it, it's looking out my window, 80% of it's already melted. <laughs> oh, makes sense. All right, cool. Well, stay safe out there. Again, thanks for your time. And everyone else, we'll speak soon. Take care, stay safe. Be good, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.